Castlevania III Dracula's Curse is the final chapter in the popular trilogy for the NES, and it is an absolute masterpiece. The gold standard for action games on the NES, Castlevania III takes the blueprint established in the original game and adds new characters, branching paths, and tons of boss fights. After the success of the first two Castlevania games, developer Konami decided to scrap the exploration-focused gameplay from Simon's Quest and return to the action focus of the original. Cartridge technology had improved, and Konami spared no expense with this game, using chips that allowed for more memory and additional audio channels that created the synthesized sound of stringed instruments. Sadly, the North American NES was unable to support the new audio chip, so the music had to be changed for the international release. If you've never heard the Japanese version, the difference is remarkable. You're listening to it right now. This time, the game's plot is a prequel. Instead of controlling Simon Belmont, you play as his great-great-great-great-grandfather, Trevor Belmont, who back in the year 1476 was summoned by the church to wield his vampire killer whip against the evil Count Dracula. This would be one of the Belmont family's first encounters with the Count, but it certainly wouldn't be the last. Castlevania III was once again directed by Hitoshi Yakamatsu, who had also directed the first two games in the series. Although the in-game credits don't list any names, Several team members were immortalized as secret codes in the game, including artists Yurata and Fujimoto, programmer Yasuo Okuda, and of course, Akamatsu himself. In addition to Trevor, you'll be able to find one of three different secondary characters which you can switch to at any time by pressing the select button. These characters open up many strategic options for the player. Grant can jump extra high and can find hidden items or shortcuts with his ability to climb on walls. Sypha has exclusive magic sub-weapons that she can use, all of which are quite powerful. And finally, the game features the first appearance of Dracula's son Alucard, who would go on to be the star of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. In Castlevania 3, Alucard doesn't have his trademark backdash, but he has a spread attack and the ability to morph into a bat that can fly. The game has a different ending depending on which companion you choose, and there's even a fourth ending if you decide to go solo. Castlevania 3 is well known for its difficulty, but it wasn't always so challenging. In addition to some minor changes to the look of some enemies and the obvious difference to the soundtrack, the original Japanese version was significantly easier. For the North American version, the way enemies deal damage was changed, so in the later levels, everything that hits you removes big chunks of your life bar. Also, the character Grant was massively nerfed. In the North American version, he wields a tiny dagger, while on the Famicom, his standard attack is a throwing dagger that requires no hearts to use. These changes to the difficulty were likely made out of concerns that game rentals would hurt sales. Rentals and increased difficulty certainly didn't stop this game from being a hit when it released in North America in September of 1990. Critics and players alike were excited about the return to the style of the original, and the branching paths gave this game an unprecedented amount of replay value. Although the next entry in the series would see the franchise transition to 16-bit consoles, this final entry on the NES was 8-bit perfection. In modern times, players and critics agree that Castlevania 3 is a bona fide classic. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Castlevania 3 at number 5. If you'd like to play Castlevania 3 on a modern platform, it is available as part of the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, which is on Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. 
The enemies are extremely aggressive and have a bad habit of knocking you into instant death pits. The bosses will crush you if unprepared, and it won't take much before it's game over. But what if I told you how to beat every stage, regardless of which path or characters you choose? What if I showed you a secret glitch that can warp you all the way to the final level? And what if I told you the best way to defeat every boss? Even Dracula himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, Castlevania 3. Before we jump into the game, there's actually a lot of secret codes for this game. They're mostly entered by putting in different names whenever you start up the game, and the first one that I'm going to show I think is the one that most people are familiar with. So if you want to get 10 lives instead of 3, put your name in as Help Me. There's a space between the help and the me. This game does give you infinite continues and there are passwords, but having more lives makes a big difference. There's a lot of mid-level checkpoints in this game, and this will keep you from getting sent all the way back to the beginning of a block. Let's talk about some codes that people may be less familiar with. If you put your name in as Fujimoto, that will allow you to start the game with Grant as your spirit partner. Now, Grant is pretty decent, but you'll get him very early in the game, so this code's not really as powerful as some of the other ones. However, if you put your name in as Urata, U-R-A-T-A, that will let you start the game with Saifa, and you'd have to go a few more levels to get Saifa on your team, so if you'd like to take advantage of her magic in the early levels, Urata is the code for you. Now, if you put your name in as Okuda, that will let you start as Alucard, and Alucard you don't get until much deeper into the game, so it's very interesting to have him on your team early on. There's a few spots where you could really take advantage of his flying ability. One last name, Akama, that will start you on the game's second quest, which is significantly more difficult than the default mode. Normally, you would have to beat the game at least once to access the second quest, and you will notice right away the difference. There usually aren't any enemies in here, but suddenly zombies are popping up and there's a skeleton knight on that upper platform. Yeah, this is going to make it a lot harder. One last code before we go on. If you hold A and B as you press start on the title screen, you'll be able to access the sound test. This game has a lot of good music in it, so this is pretty cool. Alright, let's jump into the actual game. We won't need any secret codes, so we'll put our name in as UCBVG. Whatever name you use, make sure you remember it, or your passwords won't work. As the game begins, we see this short cutscene, and you'll notice right away that no one told Konami they weren't allowed to use religious symbols in this game. There are a lot of crosses. This is the town of Wallachia, and there are no enemies in this first section, so take your time. Make sure to hit all of the candles and fires so you can get powered up. The hearts are going to give you more ammo for your sub-weapons, and when you collect enough hearts you'll also find upgrades for your whip. There are two upgrades for the whip. The first one increases its damage, and the second one increases the length. You'll see as you come through the door, if you hold up as you press B, you'll use your sub-weapon. Right now we have a dagger. The dagger doesn't deal a ton of damage, but it will allow us to have more range than the whip. 
In this church area, make sure to look for bats which sort of blend into the stained glass in the background. They'll come swooping at you and you'll want to take them out. If you get hit by a bat, you could get knocked back and if you fall off a platform, you could end up falling to your death. Now whenever you're on the stairs, you're sort of glued to the stairs so knockback doesn't apply, but you have sort of a weird way of attacking when you're on the stairs. You can only attack on certain steps, and if you hold down the button, you'll attack rapidly. It's also different for different characters. Alucard, for instance, can't attack at all when he's on the steps. Make sure to grab the holy water before you come up here. Just like in the original Castlevania, the holy water is one of the most powerful sub-weapons in the game, and it's going to make beating the boss of this area very, very easy. Feel free to use your sub-weapons liberally in this game. You'll be able to find a lot of hearts, and each heart that you find will allow you to use a sub-weapon one time. The only exception to that is the stopwatch, which requires five hearts to use, and each big heart that you find is worth five hearts. So we'll grab another heart here. We don't have the axe sub-weapon, so we won't be able to get that top candle. And whenever you jump on a platform like this, it will spin around and you'll drop through. So be very careful when you see platforms like that, especially these ones over here. If you jump on those ones, there's a good chance that you'll fall through to your death. The stopwatch could help us with the Medusas here, but if you already have the holy water, that's the best weapon for the boss, so we want to try to keep that if possible. As you go across here, it's good if you have a Medusa following behind you. That'll make it easier to walk across those platforms without jumping. Remember, if you jump on those platforms, they're going to spin around and you're going to end up below. As you pass through this checkpoint, you'll encounter some zombies. These guys will just keep on respawning, so take out whichever ones are in front of you and keep on moving to the right. If you still have the holy water, don't get the axe. If you need a sub-weapon though, the axe is not the worst. That is the rosary that we just collected. Whenever you pick that up, it'll clear out whatever enemies are on the screen. Not the most exciting item, but not the worst either. Make sure to take out that flea man before you break the brick to the left and move through the wall where you'll find this piece of meat. The wall meat will restore 8 bars of health, which is 50% of your full health bar. Clear out these flea man enemies before going up the stairs. Over here we're just going to find a heart, so it's okay if you want to skip that. And we're just going to keep making our way to the right where we're going to find another door, but it's guarded by a bone pillar. The bone pillar will spit three fireballs and you can take them out with your whip. You want to try to keep the bone pillar right at your whip's maximum range and whip in a decent rhythm so that you'll take out the fireballs. Grab another rosary when you get through the door. Over here, one of these candles is going to be a dagger. If you have the holy water, you don't want to pick up the dagger, but if you don't have any items, you can grab that one the dagger you've seen already, so you know what it does. There's a few more hearts you can grab before we reach the boss, and here he is. This is the Skull Knight. You need to go about midway across the screen to make the boss spawn, but then just head back to the left, turn to the right, and let him have it with some of your holy waters. Whenever you can't throw a holy water, whip him with your whip, but just keep the pressure up and he'll go down very fast. Now, if you don't have the holy water, I recommend spawning the boss, getting him to come over here to the left, then go into this position and just start whipping from here. He won't be able to get close enough to hit you. So just keep whipping. He'll try to get close, but he'll just get stuck in his animation there and eventually he'll go down. So those are two different ways you can deal with the Skull Knight. Of course, if you can bring the holy water here, that's the easiest way. After completing stage one, we have a decision to make. If you take the upper path, that'll take you on a detour through the clock tower and you'll have the opportunity to recruit Grant as your secondary character. If you take the lower path, that'll take you directly to the Forest of Darkness, which you have to complete either way, but you'll skip past the clock tower, and you won't have the opportunity to get Grant. If you take the shortcut to the Forest of Darkness, you'll have to play this small section, 
you'll enter the forest midway through if you go through the clock tower. Make sure you don't touch the bottom of those crushers, but it's totally okay to touch the tops of them, so ride across the tops as you go through this bottom part. I'm just going to show you the beginning section here, and then we'll jump back to the clock tower. If it's your first time through the game, I think that Sypha is the best character to take, but if you recruit Grant, it won't stop you from getting Sypha or Alucard. He'll just leave your party if you recruit either of them. And once we get to the top of these stairs, this is where we'll come out after we complete the clock tower. So let's see what happens if we take the upper path instead of the lower one. Now the clock tower is sort of a platforming intensive stage, so keep that in mind. At the very beginning you can find a big heart hidden in the wall, so make sure to grab that, and then start working your way up the stairs. Take out that skeleton. You can grab a stopwatch item here, which might come in handy, especially if you've died at some point and you don't have any items to use. We can freeze the enemies for a few seconds using the stopwatch. The only problem with it is, since it uses five hearts every time you activate it, it's very heart hungry compared to the other sub weapons. At the top of the next flight of stairs, we can jump across that rotating gear to the left and use it as a platform to get to the other side where we can break through the wall and find a big heart. Whenever you're on those rotating gears, you can use the teeth of the gear as platforms, and you'll want to get used to jumping on those. There's a bunch of them in this game. Be careful not to fall into the stairway as you jump across to the right, and here's where you can find a holy water. You'll want to pick that up as soon as you can and try to hold it to the end of the stage. Once again, it'll be very good against the boss. We'll use our holy water to take out this enemy before we jump across, and you'll notice that he dropped a stopwatch. Occasionally, enemies will randomly drop sub-weapons, and while that might sound like a good thing, it can really mess you up, so you need to watch out for that. You can actually jump to this pendulum from the middle platform here, so you don't have to climb all the way up to the left. Just ride it until it's at its rightmost point, and then jump across. And we'll do the same thing here. Jump to the pendulum when it's on the left, and then jump across to the right. It's actually pretty forgiving, so you should be able to get through that part pretty easily. As we enter this room, there's another big heart hidden in the wall here on the left, and we have to ride this big gear. You want to ride it pretty far to the right and stay near one of those gear teeth. If you don't ride it far enough to the right, you'll actually fall between the gear and the platform, and that'll be instant death. Don't worry about those orange platforms, they're not actually moving, they're just like standing on any other surface. Climb up the stairs, and in this area, we have to deal with the dreaded Medusa heads again. There's going to be an axe over here, so avoid that if you have the holy water. And Medusa heads can be kind of tricky to hit, so you're better off just trying to avoid them. Wait until they're in their upper or lower part of their wave, and just walk above or below them. Cross over this gear, watching out for Medusa heads on the other side. You can grab a money bag and that candle. Money bags just give you points, but if you get 20,000 points, that'll give you an extra life and then you'll hit extra lives at every 50,000 after that. Make your way up here. Whenever you have a grant, you'll be able to get a 1-up in that room, and we will come back through here after we recruit him, so we will have the opportunity to do that. This is the last checkpoint of the clock tower, and you can find a dagger here if you don't have a sub-weapon. You want to make sure you collect that before you break the wall and find the double shot, the double shot will allow you to use your sub weapons twice as fast, and you can also get a triple shot. The way you would normally get double and triple shots is by killing enemies using the sub weapon. If you kill enough enemies, eventually a double and then a triple shot will drop, but you'll need to keep the same sub weapon for a very long time for that to work. If you switch to a different sub weapon, well then you'll be resetting that whole counter. 
jump onto this gear and then quickly jump over to the left and then take this stairway up to the top floor. There's no more Medusa heads up here, but there is a wall meat hidden in the wall. I like to try to kill that skeleton with a sword before I get the wall meat just in case we take some damage. Because as we head over to the left, it's about time to face the boss, Nasty Grant. So head over here to the left. Grant always starts on that perch in the upper left corner. If you have the holy waters, just lob a few up there and he will go down super fast. Now if you don't have the holy waters, you want to start striking him with the whip in the upper left corner and then as he drops down, hit him a few more times, then run over to the right side and just keep whipping him as he comes towards you. He'll probably jump over you at least once and you might take a little bit of damage, but if you don't have the holy water, you don't have a whole lot of options. After Grant is defeated, he'll snap out of his trance and offer to join us. You can tell him no, but if we came all this way up the clock tower, there's no good reason why we should be turning him down. If you wanted to beat the game solo, you should probably have taken the lower path at the fork. So we'll have Grant join us, and Grant is a pretty good character. He can stick to walls, and he can jump very high. His attack is underwhelming, and he's not as well armored as Trevor. The way damage works in this game is it depends on what stage you're on and which character you are controlling, but Grant always takes one more damage than Trevor does. So here in block 2, enemies would deal 2 damage to Trevor, but they'll deal 3 damage to Grant. And you can see that he can fit into very small spaces because of how tiny he is. He can also climb on walls, but he has a pretty unimpressive melee attack. And yeah, you can see there how he takes the three damage. But that's okay because there's wall meat right over here. And heading back down the tower is going to be a lot easier than going up it. And I'll be able to demonstrate that right here. Take a look at this. Just drop off over here to the side of that gear and you'll fall all the way down to where the stairway is, but make sure you take the stairs down. If you just try to drop down here, you'll die. Over here, you'll find a dagger, and we can find that double shot. The only sub-weapons Grant can use are the dagger, the axe, and the stopwatch. Any character can use the stopwatch, but Grant at least can use a few sub-weapons. As we head through here, here's where that hidden one-up is. So you need to climb up and around the wall, and then break into this to find it then carefully climb down again. You don't want to drop off and lose that one up that you just collected. We can climb across the top here to the right and then just drop down between this gear, but watch out for the spikes below. Make sure to take the stairs down, jump over to the left, and you need to take the stairs in the lower left to get out of this section. No other way out of here will get you out alive. So take the stairs down, and then you can just drop down between that orange moving gear and the platform, and you'll be able to grab another big heart before you head up the steps and go through the door into the next area. Over here we see those pendulums again, but this is going to be pretty easy coming back. We really only need to go across the first pendulum. The second one is unnecessary, so just go down the stairs. And we're going to head back across to the right. We'll go through this skeleton here, collect a money bag, and then we'll do our best Spider-Man impression, climbing across the ceiling and then dropping behind that enemy. Spider-Grant, Spider-Grant, doing the things that a Spider-Grant can. Heading down the stairs, drop over to the left, and that's the fast way to the bottom here. Once you get to this door, that's the end of the stage. There's no boss this time. From here, the path is going to take us back to the Forest of Darkness, and after we pass through a short section there, it's going to take us to the part of the game where we can warp to the final stage. So get ready for that. To be able to do the warp, we're going to need to have full health in the next area, 
so we need to do very good here. There's a meat at the end of this, so if we take 8 or less damage we'll be okay, but if we take more than that we won't be able to do the trick. The best way to deal with these owls is to try to hit them as soon as they appear. So you'll see their eyeballs pop up, and then they'll emerge with their wings spread. That's when you want to hit them. Either throw your cross boomerang at them, or jump and hit them with a whip. If you're playing as Grant and you have the axe, that could be a good way to deal with them too, but I like Trevor for this section, especially since he takes less damage than Grant does. And that gets us through that part, but we need to get through this section too. We're not out of the woods yet. Walk out to the middle and strike the flea man before you hit the candle on the left or he'll get you. There's a big heart in the candle on the right side, and wait until this red skeleton gets out of the way before you go up the stairs. Remember, the red skeletons will always regenerate whenever you kill them, so you need to be ready to kill them again. When you get to the top of this stair, you'll fight another bone pillar, take it out, carefully get past these flea man enemies, and there's another bone pillar over here. Remember the bone pillars will spit out three fireballs and then they'll take a break for a moment. And uh, we took one hit from a flea man, but we haven't taken more than eight bars of damage, so we're still okay because there's a hidden wall meat right here. So grab that and go through the door, and we'll have a decision to make. Now at this point, if you want to go to that warp, we need to take the lower path to Dire Mire Marsh. The upper path will take you to where you can recruit Sypha, so we'll be coming back to that later. We need to be very careful at the beginning here. If you get hit by any of these enemies, you won't have full health anymore, and the trick will not work. There will not be meat to bail you out, so you need to be super cautious as you head over across to the right. I like to take out these frogs and then go under that platform since the frogs usually go overhead. And that will bring us to the stairs, and this is the first part of the trick, we're going to do the stairs glitch. So switch characters right when you get on the stairs, and you're going to walk down to the bottom and right before you transition, you want to hit select. If you did it right, you'll immediately walk downstairs, and when you come back up, you'll be floating on air. If it didn't work, just go down to the bottom of the stairs and keep trying it until you get it. Now once you get up here, this part is precise. You want to walk past that blue screen and when you get up to the glitchy one, go down and then back up again so you walk through this red screen. Do not get hit by any enemies when you're in this glitchy area. Head up through this green screen past the crushers. When you get up through it, you're going to go down, up, down again, and you'll notice that the top of your screen is messed up here. If you see that, you'll know you're on the right track. Head down through this red screen, being careful not to get hit by anything, and when you hit the blue one, head back up, but you need to hesitate and let that bone pillar fall in front of you. Then go all the way up through that red screen, through this green one, and as soon as you get to the next screen, you need to quickly go back down. You could die there, sometimes you'll fall off the screen, which can randomly happen and that's unfortunate. Head down through this green one, you'll get messed up when you hit that red one, so head back up until you're midway up this screen, then hit select to switch characters. Go up a little bit more, then head back down until you start to glitch out again, then turn back. When you get midway up the screen, switch characters again. You want to be near those orange blocks. Head back down until your character glitches out again. Don't transition the screen. Then head back up. Switch characters. Get to the middle of the screen again. Then head down. Now, once you transition the screen, you're going to go one, two, three, four five transitions and on the fifth one you should be on this green screen and you're just going to keep heading up. Be careful not to get hit by anything or the game will crash. If the screen morphs into this olive green brown color, you did it right. Head up through this green screen and then there's going to be another green screen that you need to pass through and 
This one has like a glitched out owl on it. So that's how you know you're in the right spot. When you get up here, you go down, up, down again. This time as you head down, you'll notice the background will quickly shift. So that'll let you know you're on the right track. And when you get down to the next screen, you need to head back up again. You'll head up through a green screen, then a mostly green one. And when you get to the next screen, you're going to wait until you see your character from behind that blue part. And then you want to head back down and then back up again. This part's tricky. When you get to the top here, we're going to do six transitions. One, two, three, and on the third one, you need to be mashing pause. If you do it right, you won't fall off the screen on the fourth one. And then you go five, and then six will head you back down again. At this point, it's okay if you get hit. So you'll go down through that screen and then start walking back up. At this point, you just need to keep heading up, and eventually you'll fall off the screen and die. And if you did it right, you'll get a game over, but when you respawn, you'll be on the final stage. Now, if you did anything wrong, including using a password to get to that level, or if you died any time during the game up until that point, you may end up in a bad spot where you're just dropping off the screen forever, and you'll eventually come back to level 1. If you see that, that means you did everything correctly other than not dying, so that means you could do the trick. So that's a good way to practice. Alright, well, let's take on the final stage. The final stage isn't as difficult as you may think, although we're going to take a lot more damage than we were previously. Enemies will now deal 5 damage to Grant and 4 damage to Trevor. In this area, the screen scrolls slowly upwards, and some of the blocks will break out from below your feet. You can die if you fall off the bottom of the screen, but you can also be killed from riding a platform too far up the screen, but you have to ride it pretty far up, like almost to where your health bar is. I think the easiest way is to wait until you can't wait anymore on the left side, and then drop onto the two leftmost platforms, which will break out from under you, and allow you to ride down to where the stairway is. This is a difficult room, but you can duck underneath the bone pillar here, and if you get close enough to it, you can stand on a platform that won't break out from under you. If you have the axe here, you can find a 1-up. And here's one more bone pillar. This one I usually just damage boost through because it's pretty hard to kill that one without getting hit. Now, if you're using Trevor here, there's another strategy that you can use. I like to use the stopwatch to slow down the first bone pillar and then hit it with long range whipping. This second one, however, just hit it one time and then let it shoot a fireball at you and run to the right. Another bone pillar will have respawned and this one on the left will have disappeared. So that's another way you can get through that room. This room is a checkpoint, and there's also some wall meat we can find if you need a recharge. The only thing about the wall meat is there's an annoying spider that is constantly spawning in this area, so watch out for him. And you can also pick up the holy water for Trevor if you need a weapon for him. You will not be able to use the holy water as Grant. The weapon that we want for Dracula is the axe, and we already have the axe. However, if you don't have the axe right now, you can find one in the candles right above over here. So it's not this candle on the left, it's the one over on the right. I'll just switch over to Trevor so you can see that it's the X. So you definitely want that for Dracula. It's a lot better than the dagger you'll be able to find in Dracula's room. In here you'll notice that as Grant, you can jump to this pendulum from the ground. Yeah, that makes that part pretty easy. Watch out for a bat that'll be flying your way here, and just step off to the left to get onto the third pendulum. You should easily be able to make this jump, and that will take you to the final section of the game. Now, whenever you go up these stairs, you can go right back down if you want to get another big heart, and I recommend if you want to use Grant to fight Dracula that you have a lot of hearts available. He's probably the character that needs the most. I would recommend having around 50 or more for this boss. Avoid the dagger, we definitely want the axe. And here he is, Count Dracula. 
Now you don't want to be too close to the count when you're in this form or he'll summon two fires that are directly to the left and right of you and then when he raises his arm the third fire will hit you every time. So instead keep him far enough away that you can hit him with the axe and whenever you see him raise his arm that means you need to get ready to move out of the way of the other fireball. Once he switches to the second form, this form always floats to the right first, so get to the left of it and start attacking it as it floats over that way. It'll then float to the upper left corner. You'll need to get under it at least once here, but then head back under it to the left because it's going to make its way to the bottom and then push into the right corner. You don't want to be down there or you'll get hit. Just keep hitting it with the axes, go underneath it whenever you need to, and you need to kill all five heads to reveal the third and final form. The moving platforms start in the center, you can catch a free ride on them for a few easy hits, but for the most part you want to avoid riding on those platforms. That's the easiest way to get killed in this battle. Instead you want to stay here on the left side right near the edge of the throne. Just keep jumping from that position and throwing axes at Dracula's face. Sometimes it'll shoot a laser at you and you'll need to step to the left to get out of its way. Now right at this point of the battle, a platform will move out of the floor near the throne. You need to be careful to not ride that platform because sometimes I'll accidentally get on that one and then walk off into a pit. So be aware that that might happen. Otherwise, just keep throwing axes at Dracula's face. Once he disappears, you need to wait for the platforms to go into the floor and you'll find the final red orb. That's it. We've done it. We've beaten Castlevania 3. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Dracula, of course, was a load-bearing boss, and without the support of its master, the castle can no longer stand up. Trevor and Grant look on. This will be the first of four different endings that we'll see. It all depends on which character you bring with you to the end. This is the ending for Grant, and there will be a different one for Sypha and Alucard. To get the fourth ending, you have to beat the game with Trevor by himself so that's the most difficult ending to get. It says that Grant and Trevor feel that their friendship is stronger since they work together, but they're certainly not standing very close. Maybe Grant smells bad or something. As complicated as the trick to warp to the final stage is, if you do the steps precisely, you should be able to do it. The difficult part is you need to get that far into the game without losing any lives and then you need to perform this complex trick, so doing all of that together is kind of tough. It may be easier to just beat the game the normal way. So let's go back to where we decided to go to Dire Mire Marsh and instead take the upper path and try to recruit Sypha. This is an important decision. If you go this way, you won't be able to get Alucard. So right now you're choosing between Sypha or Alucard. And if you want to stay with Grant, I recommend taking the upper path. It's way easier. So head down here after avoiding the birds on the first screen and you'll see these jellyfish enemies. Whenever you hit one, it'll spawn four smaller ones, assuming there aren't any on the screen already. There can only be four small jellyfish on the screen at once. If you're in the right position, you can kill them all with one throw of the axe, and the ones that you see that are on the ground can actually be pretty easily jumped over, so that's the recommended strategy for those ones. So just jump over them, leap over the pit at the end, and head on down the stairs. You want to be aggressive with this skeleton here, hurry to the left and jump from the upper tier and hit him while you're in midair. Then grab the hearts on the right and head on through the door. In this area, there's going to be a bunch of spiders that come down from the sky and then they shoot a smaller spider at you. So you want to watch out for those guys. Let them shoot the spider and then move forward. Unless you're close enough so that you can just hit the spider before it shoots the smaller one. Over here, you can grab a dagger. And if you have this dagger, there's a trick we can do on the boss. It's not the most useful trick 
but it is interesting, so you'll probably want to check it out. So you may want to grab that dagger if you want to perform this trick, and then just head down here, watch out for the spiders, and go down the stairs at the bottom. This is going to take us very close to the boss. There is a meat over here, but you don't want to grab this meat. You need the platform. It's right in that block there. So here's how you fight this boss. Now, if you look at the clouds in the ceiling, if two of them are flashing at the same time like they were there and you throw the dagger, you'll get a random lightning bolt, and if it hits the Cyclops, it'll deal a bunch of damage, but it's not a reliable way to fight this guy. What is a reliable way to fight this guy is to just get down on this platform, crouch and whip him in the face, and whenever he gets too close, just jump to that upper tier. He won't be able to get you up there. I think that lightning trick was really designed for Grant, who can use unlimited daggers in the Japanese version. It's more of a novelty in the North American one. And at this point, lightning strikes a statue in the background, and we will have the option to recruit Saifa. If you want to stay with Grant, I will have some tips for playing as Grant moving forward, but I do recommend taking Saifa if this is your first time through the game. Saifa is wearing a hooded white terry cloth robe like she just got out of the shower at the Double Tree, which means that she has the same armor class as Grant, but her magic is very powerful. Because we chose Saifa, Grant will leave us, so we'll say goodbye to the little guy, although now that he's alone and wearing red pants and a red bandana, he better be careful which neighborhoods he wanders into. The next stage is the ghost ship, and there's a difficulty spike here. Now the enemies will deal 3 damage to Trevor, and they'll deal 4 to Saifa or Grant. At the very beginning, you can see this blue platform, which will allow you to practice. If you jump onto one side of it, it'll cause the other side to go up. And over on the right side is a platform that you shouldn't try to jump to unless you have Alucard in your team, which you'd have to have used a code or be on the second loop of the game to get here with. Down here, we can really see the power of Saifa's fire magic. And we can also find a fairly rare item, the Invincibility Potion, which will keep us safe from damage for a short time. Don't grab this stopwatch. We'll rather stick with the fire magic. And we can grab a quick heart before we head downstairs. Now, when we get down here, I recommend that you switch to Trevor for one simple reason. If you use Saifa, You'll try to go down the stairs, and then you'll press up to use her fire, but you'll instead go up the stairs again, which is obnoxious. So you want to stick with Trevor so you can use your whip on that enemy, and you'll see a lantern above you that we'll only be able to get with Grant, so we'll review that a little bit later. In this room, there are some blocks that will break out from under you, and you'll notice they have a slightly different color, so you want to stay on the left at first and take out that ghost before you move to the right. Up at the top, there's a lantern where you can get a fire or a dagger if you're Trevor. Now, we already have both of those items, so we're just going to find a small heart. If you died and had to return to the checkpoint, that's where you'll be able to find an item. But if you already have something that you like, I don't recommend that you go up there. Make your way across to the right. Over here are some of those red skeletons. Even if you burn them with fire, they will still regenerate. There's a wall meat that you can grab to regenerate some health, and there is a spot where you can stand between the two skeletons on the stairway. So take advantage of that, wait until the top one has moved into a good position, and then head up here. Make sure to get rid of that ghost before you head to the right. That guy can definitely knock you into a pit. And we're going to take advantage of the very long range of the fire as we work our way up here. Be careful of this skeleton that throws bones. Those are pretty dangerous while you're going up the stairs. If you have a character that has the axe, you may want to switch to Trevor or Grant and axe that guy before you go up the steps. Otherwise, make your way to the left through the door. We have some platforming to do in this room, and you need to be patient. If you jump onto those first platforms that you see as you come through the door, you are going to die, unless you're Grant. But otherwise, wait until the next set of platforms comes from the top and jump to those. That'll get you across pretty easily. 
over here you want to wait until the platform crosses that whitish piece of wood at the top before you jump to the first one, and then wait until that third one gets high enough to jump to the fourth. From there it's pretty easy. Take out this ghost. We can't jump high enough to grab that heart, although you may be able to get it with Trevor. And we'll head up the stairs. Over to the left is a lantern where you can get a 1-up, but you'll need Grant to be able to get it, so we'll review that in a moment. But first, it's time to fight a boss. This is Medusa. And Medusa is super easy if you have Sypha. Try to duck the arrow if you don't have very much health. But otherwise, you can just roast her with fire and she will go down super fast. You might say Grant is the Kevin Hart of Castlevania, so you can use him to get a big heart above the door before the checkpoint. After you go through the door, that ghost is going to attack you in this hallway, so just like with any other character, you want to lure that ghost over to the left, and then just attack it rapidly until it dies. Head over to the right here, and as Grant, if you need a dagger, there's one in that lantern, but otherwise you can just go right across the ceiling and easily get through that part. Quickly make your way across here, but stop to take out this ghost, and I recommend using the stairs. Head down to the bottom, use your axe to take out this red skeleton on the right side, and don't forget about the wall meat. One nice thing about Grant is if you miss time a jump, a lot of times you can just grab a wall and save yourself. So keep that in mind, you can hold down the jump button sometimes to just grab the walls. And we'll head up the stairs where we can do another shortcut. Normally you'd have to go all the way to the right here, but just get rid of that ghost, and you can just climb right up here and head over to the door. That simple. You can go really fast through this room as well. Remember how you needed to wait for the platforms with the other characters? Well with Grant, you can make it on the first set. You just have to grab the wall to get up on the left side. Over here you can do a similar thing, and you can just wait and jump at the bottom. Another platform will come and grab you. Up here you can get that big heart, take out the ghost, and then make your way up the stairs. That's going to take us to where that 1-up is. Now getting this one up is tricky. If you mess up this wall climb, especially the one after you get the one up, well then you'll die and you'll have to go pretty far back. So unless you're very confident in your Spider-Man abilities, I don't really recommend getting that one up. Here's how I would fight the Medusa using Grant. Get pretty close and attack standing up at first, but once Medusa moves out a bit, you'll want to crouch down because Grant can actually get under that ray that turns you to stone. If you do get turned to stone, it's not that big of a deal, just kind of move the controller back and forth until you get out of it, and continue to fight her. But that's not the end of the ghost ship, so let's get back to playing with Sypha. We're not going to switch to Grant over and over again, but this is one stage where his abilities are particularly useful. I like to use Trevor here because he's good at attacking on the stairs, so before you get to the top, take out that headless ghost, and over here on the right side you can find some wall meat. If you took damage fighting the Medusa, that's a good way to recharge yourself. Head over here to the left, there's a few of those blocks that break out from under your feet, but you shouldn't have to stand on them long enough for them to completely break. Make your way up the stairs, and in the next area, there's going to be some platforming that we have to do. It's those blue seesaw platforms. To get across here, you want to jump to the middle of the first seesaw, then do a little hop to the upper part, and then jump over to the left side of the second seesaw, let it go up a little bit, and then jump over to the right and quickly jump off to the other side of the gap. That'll get you through this door, now this is a tricky room. I like to jump across here getting this position and well if you get hit from that position you can see that you'll actually just go across the gap. Otherwise the bird will fly over your head, it's random. But if you go to that spot, at least if you get hit, you won't die. We're almost to the boss over here, wait until that headless ghost backs up and then hit him. And you can come down here where we have to deal with another one of those little ghosts as well as a bouncing skeleton, which is pretty easy to take out. But down here you can grab the axe item for Trevor, which could be useful on the boss that's upcoming. And then head up here. 
If you need to recharge your hearts, we certainly don't need to, you can go back down the stairs and collect those items again. But now it's time for the boss, the Double Trouble. The first thing I like to do with Sypha is stand over here on the left. But as soon as the ghost goes in the coffin and the mummies pop out, just start roasting them with fire and you should be able to get rid of the left one quickly, then jump across and take out the one on the right. For the second part, I recommend switching back to Trevor. Jump up here and the Cyclops is going to come out and you can probably get a free hit on him or two from that position. Then you want to try to hit him as he's walking slowly towards you, so jump and whip and then keep walking to the right, but whenever you see him slow down like that to charge, you need to quickly run to the other side of the room and get ready to jump over him. That's a conservative strategy, but it will keep you safe. So anytime you see him charging, just get ready to jump over him. You may be able to get a hit on him as he's charging towards you, but it's risky. Instead, you should try to get your hits after the charge or as he's walking slowly towards you, or you can also hit him right after he does his hammer attack. Those are all good times to hit him in the face. If you have Grant here, there's a little shortcut you can do that'll take you right to the boss, and you won't have Sypha for fighting the mummies, so I recommend using Trevor instead. So jump over to the left and wait for Boo Berry to transform into Yummy Mummy. Make that happen, breakfast scientists. And just start whipping the mummies through the blocks after they emerge from the coffin. You'll need to probably duck to get that last hit from on top of the blocks, and then come down here and take out the second one. That's the most dicey part. If you have Grant, I would switch to him to fight the Cyclops, because he can just jump over the Cyclops, which is awesome. I recommend that you use the dagger, it's the easiest to aim at this guy. And just stay far away and just keep shooting him in the face with your daggers and jump over him whenever he gets close. The only thing you need to watch out for with Grant is sometimes whenever he pauses to do his charge attack, it'll make you mistime your jumps, so just be aware of that. Whenever you see him do that pause before he charges, you need to wait a minute before you actually jump over his head. But Grant is very good against the Cyclops. None of the other characters can just jump over him like that. So if you have him on your team, that's how I recommend that you fight that boss. So it turns out that Double Trouble was actually no trouble. And after our points tally up, we're going to switch back to Sypha and watch as the ghost ship docks with the next stage, the Tower of Terror. This is a tough one. You see right in front of you is one of those flipping platforms, but now it has spikes on the bottom, so that's even more annoying than it was before. Wait for the bone pillars to stop spitting fire before you jump and attack them. And over here, you'll need to crouch down and attack the flames. So get a good rhythm and take out that bone pillar before you head up the stairs. In this room, we meet the Medusa Head's evil cousin, the larger gargoyles. These things also move in a wavy pattern, but they're a lot bigger. That makes them easier to hit, but also means that it's a lot easier for them to hit you. So yeah, these guys are dangerous. Watch out for them as you're ascending the stairs, and I recommend staying with Trevor here because, of course, we know Trevor is good at fighting when on the stairs. So keep on heading up. Watch out for any of the gargoyles. You definitely don't want to get hit by a gargoyle when you're not on the stairs because there's a good chance that you'll get knocked off of a platform and you could fall to your death. Up here, you'll make it to the top and it's very tricky to avoid those guys as you're ascending the last stairs, but we're almost to the checkpoint here, so we're in good shape. Up here, you may recognize this axe throwing guy from the original Castlevania, although I think that they're a little bit easier in this one. You may need to crouch down if you notice that that axe throwing knight is going to throw an axe low. Before you leave, make sure to hit the block above the door for a wall meet and then make your way through. 
In here you'll see some fuzz enemies which technically can be killed if you hit them enough times, but instead you just want to disrupt this one at the bottom so that it gets out of the way of the one at the top. And don't forget to grab the holy water for Trevor before you go up the stairs. You won't be surprised to find out if you can carry that holy water to the boss, it'll make it super easy. Now once you go to the top of these stairs, the auto scroll will begin. So make sure you're ready for that. One tricky part about the auto scrolling here is that you can actually get up to the platforms at the highest point before the enemies spawn. So you need to wait a little bit for the enemies to pop up before you go to the top platform. So while you may think it's a great idea to just hang out at the very top of the screen, there's a good chance that you'll end up having an enemy just spawn right on top of you if you do that. So try to stay in the upper middle for the most part. Now once you get up here, you're safe from the auto scroll. It's not going to scroll any higher to the point where it can kill you. So just take your time when you get up here, grab the candles, and then climb the stairs to the next area. This next room is very important and can make the next part of this stage easy or difficult, depending on how you perform here. So watch what I do. You want to go to the upper tier, carefully walk across these platforms without jumping on them, but you do want to jump on the last one, but just enough to flip it over, so jump on the edge. Then jump right here so that you fall down through that one. That will allow you to jump over and get the one up on the left side. But that's not the most important part. You need to switch to Sypha here and get this candle. That's going to give you the lightning power. This is probably Sypha's best magic, although her ice magic is also very good and extremely useful. But this magic shoots three balls of lightning and these things do a ton of damage. This magic is awesome, and we're about to get a lot of use out of it in the next part. In this room, there's another one of those Axe Knights. Come down here across the bottom to be able to get a big heart, but don't get that candle on the left. That's a fire book, and we already have the lightning, which is better. You can try to use the lightning to take out this Axe Knight, but Sypha's basic attack is pretty underrated. It doesn't deal a ton of damage, but it's very fast. So it's actually a lot better than you may think. Watch how effective it is against this Bone Pillar. You can also use it to take out the above Bone Pillar. Sometimes you can use it to stun lock enemies as well, so yeah, it's pretty good. But we're going to use magic to take out these Bone Pillars in the upper left. Those are really obnoxious and would make it very difficult to go up the stairs. Oh, and we just got an extra life, so that's pretty awesome. Keep working your way up the steps, and when you get to this tier, use your magic. I just hold up and just keep mashing B until those bone pillars are gone. Then you want to spawn this bone pillar and take him out from this position down here. So just keep launching your lightning magic, and you won't have to deal with these bone pillars at all. This part's really difficult to do without Sypha. I like to attack this bone pillar from this position. So just clear through that guy, then take a big jump to make this one spawn. And we'll hit him with some more lightning from this spot. And then we'll ascend the stairs. Now this one, I just like to walk past. Don't even worry about that guy. And that's going to take us to the end. We have to deal with a few of these birds, which are not that hard to deal with with the lightning. But we're almost to the boss when you get to this part. Over here, there's a fire book. You should probably keep the lightning. There's two good ways of fighting the boss here. If you have the holy water, that's probably the faster way of doing it, so I'll show that first. We'll switch over to Trevor. There is a wall meet here if you think you might need it, but just stand right in this spot, drop a holy water on Frankenstein, and whip him between holy waters, and he goes down so fast. So yeah, holy water just wrecks Frankenstein's monster, but it may actually be better to use the lightning magic. So let's say you're playing as Sypha, head up here, and on this block you're safe from the earthquake that Frank does. You're not completely safe from the blocks that he throws, but it's not too hard to jump over them, so just watch for him to do that, and just keep launching your lightning magic. 
stay up here. I'm just launching lightning magic, and if I see him try to throw a block at me, I'm going to try to jump over it. But that's another good way of fighting that boss. Either way, Frankenstein's monster will burn to ashes, and we'll be on to the next stage. So far, we've seen Saifa's fire and lightning magics, but she has one more, the ice magic, and that's going to come into play here in the Castle Causeway. If you just made it here from the last stage and you still have the lightning magic, you can use that to take care of these flea man enemies, but if you've died and had to come back to this part, you should probably switch to Trevor. Trevor's pretty good against this axe throwing enemy, although Saifa is too. Remember that you should crouch down if you notice he's throwing the axe in the lower position. Underneath that ledge, you can grab a sub weapon, the dagger. I won't assume that you already have the holy water from the previous stage. And that will bring us to this area where there's flowing water, and that water will push against you, making it harder to move forward. You'll want to do a lot of jumping in this area so that you can get over the water more quickly. Now if you have Saifa here, you'll be able to get that new magic. This is the ice magic, and not only does it freeze enemies, you can see that it freezes the water solid, creating a nice surface for us to walk on. Yeah, that's very convenient. Technically, the ice is non-lethal to enemies, but it'll make it so you can kill them with a single melee attack. You remember, it takes a bunch of hits to kill a bone pillar normally, but now you can take it out in one shot. You can also use the ice to kill enemies that are normally essentially invincible, like those fuzz monsters and the red skeletons. So if you freeze a red skeleton and hit it, it will not regenerate. Over here, you can use the fire as a platform if you freeze it, and that's a tricky way that you can get up on top here to get a big heart. This concept of freezing enemies or projectiles and using them as platforms is something that we'll be able to do in a number of areas in the game to create shortcuts for Saifa, so we'll certainly be looking at some of those. Down here, I like to switch to Trevor because this is an opportunity to get the Holy Water, although take out the Bone Pillar first. The Holy Water, you're not gonna believe this, will make the boss very easy. So if you can make it to the boss with the Holy Water, yeah, we'll be able to kill it very quick. Of course, Holy Water is not just great against the boss, we can throw it up here to easily remove this Bone Pillar. And then we can also use it to scare back that Axe Knight so that he steps back to the end of that platform where we can easily whip him down. Head on up these stairs. And make your way to the next area. Heading over here, there's another one of those Axe Knights. I jumped over the axe this time when it was low, but it's probably easier to just crouch down and whip the axe out of the way with your whip. I had to do several jumps because of the boomeranging effect of that axe. Over here there's a dagger, but of course we want to keep the holy water. It's very easy to kill this guy with the holy water if you can back him up against a wall or the edge of a platform. And then we'll head on through this door, but not before we grab some wall meat to replenish our health. Watch out for the bird as soon as you get into this area, and then we're going to have to deal with a rickety bridge. Don't grab the dagger if you already have the holy water, but as soon as that green pillar in the background passes by, the blocks will start falling, so you need to hurry across this to the right as fast as you can. But don't worry when you get to the end, the last two blocks will not fall. There are a ton of fishman enemies that are constantly spawning here, so just clear out whichever ones are in front of you and hurry to the stairs. Down here is where we're going to fight the boss. If you have the holy water, you don't want to get the axe, but if you don't have the holy water, the axe might be something good. Stand one block in from the right side of the middle platform and toss a holy water to the left to get rid of one of the water dragons, then crouch right here in this position and wait for that dragon to pop up on the other side. So you can hit it with the holy water just the same way you did the other dragon. It's really that easy. Now, if you don't have the holy water, it's going to be a little bit tougher. You want to get that axe, so make sure you pick that up and then make your way in here. 
You can use your axe from this position to get a hit on the first dragon, and you want to mostly stay on the center platform. If you can get behind one of the dragons, it may be worth it to jump onto one of the other platforms like right now. But you need to be careful doing that because when you're on a smaller platform, it'll be much easier to get knocked back into the water. So you want to mostly stay here in the middle and try to attack the dragons at range. If one's right above you, that's a good time to hit it with the axe. And eventually you should be able to whittle them down. And that's going to take us to the next map, putting us officially within the castle. Alright, so we're not exactly inside the castle yet. We're on the bridge that will lead us inside the castle, but this is the final map, so there's only four more stages to the end of the game. This one requires a little bit of platforming, and right at the beginning, there's a holy water you can get as Trevor, or if you're Sypha when you hit that candle, it'll be the freeze magic. So we already have ice magic right now. We don't need to pick it up, so we'll get the holy water for Trevor. But if you don't, you should probably get the ice magic for Sypha because that will help you against those fuzz enemies. Wait for the platform to reach that gray plateau in the background and that's when you should jump. Then quickly head to the right and do a few jumps to get across that series of platforms. With the ice magic you'll easily be able to get past these bone pillars and flea man enemies. And here in the wall you can find a big heart so that's going to make it a lot easier to cast more ice magic. Head on up here when the timing is right. We'll use our staff to bat down those fireballs and eventually we'll get close enough to freeze the bone pillar. Now if you want to jump over here, that's a money bag for you that you can pick up for points. And then we'll just head up the stairs. Here's a fun part where a bunch of harpies are dropping flea man enemies on us. There's a fire magic you can grab there, but the freeze magic is going to be much better here. Be careful, if you freeze one of these harpies while it's holding a flea man enemy, sometimes it will drop the flea man anyway, even though it will appear that it was frozen. So it's better to use your freeze magic whenever they've been separated from each other. This area is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna collect some candles, wait for those fireballs to stop firing, and then just start icing our way through this part. So get close enough to the bone pillars to freeze them and then bat them down with your staff. So freeze and hit, and freeze and hit. It's possible to actually jump from a fireball to get up to that upper ledge a little bit faster, but it's pretty unnecessary. Just head up here, freeze this guy. You can also freeze his axe. Watch out for an axe if it's not frozen. Sometimes it will be boomeranging towards you. But it's okay we took a hit because there's a wall meet over here to bail us out. And we'll head up the stairs. Are you ready for the most difficult jump in the game? If you happen to be playing as Grant, definitely switch to him now. So you need to jump from here, jump from the high part, come over here, jump across this, and this is the hard one. You need to jump from the very edge here and then make sure you're holding to the right when you hit the edge. If you're not holding right the entire time, you probably won't make it. And you need to jump from farther off of that left ledge than you may think is possible, so make sure Sypha's feet are all the way off the edge before you jump. That part is difficult. You can see over here that you can freeze these red skeletons and actually kill them instead of having them regenerate as they normally would. And we're just going to keep on heading to the right. Freeze the birds when they get in your way, and then head down the stairs. This next part is sort of a preview for the final stage of the game. There's another upward scrolling section here with platforms that break out from under your feet. Don't miss the lightning magic over here on the right side. We're going to use that to easily defeat the next boss. The stairway that you're looking for is going to pop up over on the far right and once you find it, you'll be able to walk down to the final area of the stage. We don't have ice magic anymore, so we can't permanently kill this red skeleton, but we can temporarily kill him so that we can pick up a heart, and there's nothing hidden in the wall over on the left side, but there is something hidden right to the left of these coffins. 
The boss here is the Triple Threat, and this boss is pretty similar to the Double Trouble that we fought before, but this time there's a third boss involved. The good news is, with the lightning magic, we can just hang out up here on this platform, and neither the mummies nor the cyclops are going to be able to hurt us up here. So the only one that we'll have to worry about is the third and final boss, the new one, the Leviathan. So just keep using your lightning to take out the cyclops, it's very effective against the cyclops. And for the third boss, I like to go over to the left side, and you'll see why in a minute. We want to lure him over there, that's just going to make it easier to fight this guy. The good news about him is that he's slow, so he'll emerge, he'll kind of do a jump, hit him with your lightning. Now this time he's going to come up above there, so you don't want to be standing there. Try to get him with some more lightning, and we've got him successfully over onto the left side. After the third jump, he launches fireballs, but if he's standing over there on the left, if you're close enough, they'll just fly over your head. So every three jumps, he launches fireballs. You either need to have him elevated and be close, or get far away when he shoots the fireballs. And that's it, that's the triple threat. It's not really that much more difficult than the double trouble, especially if you were able to pick up that lightning magic. The next stage is actually inside the castle, and it's a little bit of a blast from the past if you've played the original Castlevania. We even have the old Castlevania soundtrack. Once you get in here, we will be taking the maximum amount of damage for the rest of the game. So enemies will now deal 4 damage to Trevor, and they'll deal 5 damage to Sypha or Grant. So keep that in mind, enemies will hit very hard now. Be careful as you ascend the stairs. I picked up the fire magic here because if you were to die and had to continue on this stage, you wouldn't have the lightning magic. So I didn't want to assume that anybody would still have the lightning magic as they were playing through here. And the fire's pretty good. Certainly if you already have the lightning magic, keep it for now. We will have the opportunity to get it again before the end of this stage. We also got another extra life, so we have a lot of extra lives in reserve now. Not that we're probably going to need them. Up here you want to take out the spider on the left first and then deal with the headless ghost. These spiders will continuously respawn, so work your way to the right and don't forget to hit the block above the door to get a big heart. There are some green, what looks like, cabbage monsters that we have to fight here. And those guys are relentless, so do your best to take them out. They will bounce up and down and all over the place. They can be kind of unpredictable, so if you do get hit, there is a wall meet over on the right side for you to find. Make sure to be careful as you climb the stairs so you don't run into that red skeleton. Kill it temporarily and make your way to the left. Over here, if you can take out that last cabbage, we can hit this candle for a big heart and then we'll head up the stairs. In this room we need to work our way around to the right and then back to the left, but the most exciting part is that we're going to be able to find ice magic, which will make a lot of this easier. You can actually jump from the lower platform there and hit that axe knight with fire, so that's a good thing to do before you go to the upper platform. And up here, hit these candles, but it's these higher ones that you're specifically looking for, we're going to shoot that one down with the fire. It's the ice magic. At the end, there's a big heart, and then we'll head up the stairs. Once you get up here, we're almost to the boss. We can break this wall on the left side to get another big heart. And up here is the most exciting thing that we're going to be able to find. A few more hearts and the lightning magic. Now as soon as I get the lightning magic, I like to switch to Trevor just to make sure that we don't accidentally lose it because there's a lot of sub weapons up here. Also, the blocks are going to start breaking out from under our feet again, so we need to hurry to the right. You can probably skip most of these candles. It's nice to get more hearts, but it's not really necessary. What is important is that you kill that knight at the end. He can certainly mess you up. And once you get over here, we're going to switch back to Sypha. 
This boss is the Grim Reaper, and Sypha is very good at fighting him, so start right here on this middle platform. As soon as he fades into existence, you want to hit him, drop down, hit him with another set of lightning, and make sure to finish him with one staff hit. Now he'll turn into this head. You can get over onto these platforms on the right side and just beat him down while intermittently using your lightning. The Grim Reaper just isn't as scary as he was in the first Castlevania. That's going to bring us to the Castle Gardens, which is the next to last stage in the game, and also one of the most difficult ones. At the very beginning, there's no enemies right here, so take your time and grab a few hearts and then make your way up the stairs. Here at the beginning on the left side you can see there's some candles. We can hit them with Sypha and reveal a fire book, but that's actually an axe which you would be able to get with Grant, or you could use Alucard to fly up there and then switch to Trevor to get the axe. Over here you want to hit these flea men as soon as they're dropped right in front of you, and when one drop behind you catches up, turn around and whack it with your staff. It's actually not as difficult as it may look. There's a hidden heart and a block down at the bottom, and then we'll work our way up the stairs into the next area. If you have Sypha's lightning magic, or more likely the axe with Trevor or Grant, you'll be able to reach these candles that are high up in the air, but they're not really that exciting. Make your way through the door. In the next area, there's a few of those crushers that you may remember from earlier in the game. You can jump on top of them and use them to get the fire magic and some of the other candles in this area. Wait for that one to drop down, then jump up on top of it, and then wait until that spike in front of you has dropped down and the crusher is in the upper position before you jump over. Hitting that spike will deal you a ton of damage. This next room is difficult if you don't know what to do. Watch out for the gargoyles, wait for this bone pillar to spit two fires, then hit it with a fire when you get to the top of the stairs, and just start whacking it with your staff. As you go up these next stairs, you want to move up just high enough for that first bone pillar to spit its two fireballs, then after the two fireballs have been spit, you can move up and reveal the next bone pillar. If you don't stagger them that way, it'll be very difficult to weave between the fireballs. Head up here, wait for that one to spit its fire, then jump across. Jump up here, kill this bone pillar, and then I usually just avoid the next one. Watch out for the gargoyles. Wait for it to fire, and then head on up the stairs. So we'll just wait for him to throw the axe, get under it, hit him with a fire, and then beat him down with the staff. We'll crouch because he crouched. Jump and grab the big heart, and then head on through the door. This next room is sort of like a relaxing break before the next very difficult room. So take out these easy enemies in here and collect the candles, and steal your nerves for the next part. We have another one of those upward scrolling rooms. As soon as you get to the top of the next stairs, that's when the scroll is going to start, so you may want to try to kill this skeleton before you get up there. Alright, here we go. Now, we need to move fast here, but the most important thing is we also need to find an ice magic. So, we want to hurry up the steps, wait for that fuzz to get out of the way, and then get over here and quickly get that candle and get out of there. That part is tricky. Then if we catch up, we may be able to get the one up on the right side. It might honestly not be worth it, especially since it's in those upper blocks, but if you're feeling up to it, give it a shot. The ice magic will make this section a little bit easier now that we can freeze those fuzz monsters and actually kill them, and we'll want to freeze this skeleton before we jump over to the left, and then just freeze these guys if they're in your way. There's a big heart over here if you have time to grab it, but of course prioritize getting up to the top before the screen scrolls out from under you, and once you get up here, you're safe. The screen's not going to scroll so much that you die once you get to this point. We'll switch over to Trevor, just so that I can hit that candle on the left side and you can see that it's nothing exciting, and we will climb up the stairs to the next area. Now, over here, if you jump over to the right, you'll be able to get a wall meat. So let's go and grab that. 
Just be careful that you don't get hit by a bat and knocked back into a pit when you try to get it. Up here, we can take out this Axe Knight and hit these candles for a big heart. And then we'll move on into the next room, which is a pretty difficult one. And this is why we wanted the ice magic. You can see that there's water in here. Now, if you have the ice magic, it's also possible to do a shortcut. That stairway right above us will lead us to the next part of the stage. So if you can freeze one of these birds at just the right height, you can jump off of it and get up here. Now, if you're unable to do that, I'll show you the normal way to get through this. Something to keep in mind, if you don't jump to get that big heart right there, the second bird won't come down and attack you, so if you just stay on your feet, you can walk right under that second bird. When you get over here to the left, you want to take out those two birds before you go up the stairs. And when you get to the top, we can find a very useful weapon. The good old lightning magic. So if you have the lightning magic, that is going to be very good for the boss of this stage which can be a pretty hard one if you don't know the strategies. This last candle is a fire magic, so don't get that if you have the lightning. If you get it by accident though, the fire magic is not the worst thing that you could have for the boss, and if you were to take that shortcut, you may just want to grab the fire magic instead of going all the way to the left to get the lightning. So that is an option for you if you can use the ice magic to do a shortcut. You can grab a big heart over in the wall, and here's the boss, the doppelganger. Now, with the lightning magic, you just want to get into this position, and just keep jumping and shooting the lightning, and it'll go down, and two of those balls will hit the boss each time for a lot of damage. It won't be long until the doppelganger is defeated. Now, let's say you got here with the fire magic. The fire magic actually has very good range. You actually have more range than the doppelganger's fire magic. But you can start walking back as the doppelganger passes through the middle, and it will often get stuck just attacking with the staff. And you can just keep jumping up there and roasting it with your fire. Now it did break out of it here, but I got it back into the lock again, so it's just kind of standing there waving a stick around, and you can jump up there and hit it with the fire. If you're having a lot of trouble with this boss, something else you can try is switching to Trevor, hitting the boss very quickly after you switch, then switch back to Sypha, switch to Trevor again, do one hit, switch back to Sypha. The boss sort of freezes up a little bit when it changes characters. And that brings us once again to Dracula's Lair. We've already been through this one with Grant, but it's a lot different with Sypha. Take out these birds and jump across, watching out for this red skeleton. You may need to use fire on him if he's not close enough to hit with your staff, and there could be a weapon or a fire for you if you don't already have it. Head down the stairs, and here's that auto-scrolling section. If you stay towards the top of the screen, you are in danger of getting crushed, but it seems like fewer Medusa heads will spawn, so keep that in mind. As Sypha, you may actually want to get the stopwatch here. So over on the right side, you can get the stopwatch. That's going to make the next room easier if you want to play it as Sypha. That's the one with the bone pillars and the parts of the ground that break out from under you, and that can be a pretty frustrating room sometimes. So do your best to grab the candles. Head across this gear, that's another way you can get through this room. We did the other pattern before, where you just waited in the top left. And head down here. Wait for the fireballs, get all the way to the right, and freeze everything with the stopwatch. Then freeze it again, but get close enough to hit the bone pillar so that you're not standing on a block that will be breaking out from under you. And then over here, we can use the stopwatch again. So stopwatch, very effective in this room. It also stops the bats from getting you, which is pretty important. So we'll head through the door to the final checkpoint. And there's also that wall meat for us, which is often referred to as the last supper because it's the last wall meat in the game. Down at the bottom where the holy water would be for Trevor, we can get the ice magic, so Ice magic is nice here, it has that spread effect, which is very effective against the spiders, and it's also nice to be able to kill those regenerating skeletons. We'll head over here, 
grab a heart, and it's not hard to freeze that guy from below, making it easier to go up the stairs. The ice won't be very good against Dracula himself, so you can grab the fire magic now if you want to, but if you miss it, or you want to use ice until a little bit later, there's going to be another fire magic right before the boss. So wait up here, hit any bats that get in your way, and I like to just crouch down and just keep attacking in case a bat comes in front of me. That'll just get rid of that bat. And then just step off of this pendulum onto the next one, wait until it gets all the way to the left, and jump over to the door that leads to the final area again. Remember that you can go back down the stairs to get more hearts if you need them. We shouldn't need too many hearts for Dracula because our sub weapon deals a lot of damage to the count. We'll head up here, we can grab all of these candles, one of them would normally be a fire magic if you didn't already have it, and you want to stand right here and just start roasting this guy. Just hold up and just keep mashing B. You'll also hit him a little bit with the staff. Then hurry over to the left. For the Dracula hedge, you know that it always drifts to the right, and if you kill Dracula all the way over on the left side, it'll have to drift pretty far to the right, so you'll have a lot of great opportunities to hit it with your fire. And that will bring us to the final form. You want to ride these platforms up and try to hit Dracula three times from the left. When you're in the top middle, walk over to the right to avoid a lightning, then hit Dracula one more time as you drop down to the right, and then get down to safer ground. Now we're going to get up on this slow moving platform, just hit him a couple times and jump back down to the right, and then we can jump onto the platform once more and get the last few hits as it goes back into the floor. That's the safest way I've found for using Cypha against Dracula, and it's very, very fast. With Dracula sufficiently burnt to a crisp, it's time to enjoy the second ending. So we already saw Grant's ending, now it's time to watch the castle collapse with Sypha. Trevor stands a lot closer to Sypha than he does to Grant, and she lets her hair out as well. He puts his arm around her in a warm embrace. Something that you may or may not know about Sypha is that after this adventure, she and Trevor get together. That's right. She is Simon Belmont's great-great-great-great-grandmother, and also the maternal ancestor for many of the Belmonts. It seems that Sypha had been living that hard-knock life, but ever since she met Trevor, she's finally beginning to feel more comfortable with herself. Well, isn't that nice? So that wraps up Sypha's storyline, but there's still one more character that we haven't found yet. Alucard, Dracula's son. To get to him, we need to take that lower path when we took the upper one before that led deeper into the Forest of Darkness. So let's go back to there and actually finish Dire Mire Marsh this time. So if you want to get Alucard, you have to take the lower path here. You may remember this area, this is the part where we were able to do that warp to the final stage. So we're going to go through that first part with the frogs that pop out of the swamp. But there's a lot more to this stage than just that. So just make your way to the right, taking out any frogs that spawn in front of you, and let the ones that spawn behind you follow. When you get to this part, I like to take the lower path. It's okay to jump down in the swamp. If you linger too long down there, you can die, but you'd really have to be asleep at the wheel for that to happen. There's some wall meat over on the far left side down here, but to get it, you need to let a frog spawn on the right and then quickly drop down there. Otherwise, you'll have to keep killing a frog that'll just constantly spawn in front of you and it'll never let you through. So that's the way to get over there. Once you have the wall meat, or if you have good health, you can just skip it. Make your way over here to this door. That's going to bring us deeper into the marsh. As a reminder, because we're on block four right now, any enemies that hit Trevor are going to deal three damage, and any enemies that hit Grant would deal four. Use this platform to get above the mudmen enemies, making that section very easy to pass through. 
and there's an axe weapon up here if you want to grab it. Make your way across this platform to grab a rosary. It's not super important to do that, but it's something you can do. And over here, you can grab a holy water, and even better, if you break this block to the left, you'll be able to go underneath where you can get a wall meat that's hidden in the bottom. So grab that wall meat and then make your way back to the right. Take out any mud men that are in your way and just continue to jump across the swamp. The bats that try to spawn behind you can get annoying, so watch out for them. And once you're ready, head on through the door. In this next room, there's more of those obnoxious ghosts that you may remember from the other path. And there's also a cross boomerang weapon, which is very good for the boss, so I recommend grabbing it. And then just run over here to the right, turn to the left and fire it, and you should be able to hit both of those ghosts at the same time. Stay down here and take out this ghost, and then work your way to the stairs. Once you get down here, we're almost to the end. You don't want to get this stopwatch that's over on the far left. Use your boomerang to hit that bat at range so that he doesn't even fly at you. Head through these mud men. If you kill multiple mud men, you can get a bunch of points with your boomerang. And if you throw a boomerang before you head to the right, you can catch the first bat before it moves. And then you can catch the second one and third one before they come flying at you as well. And once you get here, Alfred, open the door to the bat cave. It's time to fight the giant bat. As soon as the bat starts moving, jump and hit it with your boomerang and start whipping it. You should be able to keep it mostly in the same spot, and although it will split into smaller bats, you can easily take them all out at the same time. Now, if one or two of those bats gets away, you'll have to chase it down, but honestly, that boss is not very difficult. The next stage is Alucard's Lair, and that's the whole reason for coming on this long path, unless you're just trying to challenge yourself. We're going to be able to recruit Alucard here. Watch out for those flying eyeballs from Zelda 2, and over here you'll notice that there's some acid dripping from the ceiling that actually removes the blocks. So I'm going to run over here and collect some of these candles, watching out for the mummies that spawn constantly through lightning bolts in this area. Pretty annoying. And then I'm going to head back over to the left. Now, if you have the stopwatch, you can stop those mummies for a moment. So that's one way to get a little bit of respite. But over here, if you wait for a while, and it does take a minute, the acid will eat away these blocks and allow you to get down below where those candles are. Now, the first thing is that those candles are a boomerang. So that's a decent weapon. But that's not the only reason why you might want to go down there. If you break the wall on the right side, there's a hidden wall meat down there as well. So grab that boomerang, and then you can also grab yourself a wall meat. And that's another way that you can get through this area. If you see that little fire flickering there, eventually it will go away, although it may take a moment. And there are a few more candles on the right side that you can grab if you want some more hearts. All right, down the stairs. Head down these stairs, and we're going to have the opportunity to wait for the acid to eat through some blocks again, but this time we'll be able to get a one-up for waiting. So we're just gonna hang out here for a while, let the acid drip through the blocks, and make sure that enough of them are cleared so that you can actually jump over to where those candles are. So just Keep waiting for the acid. Super fun stuff. Just let that acid eat away. At this point, you can probably get it with Grant because Grant can fit in small spaces, but we'll just wait for it to clear out more blocks and we'll be able to easily grab it with Trevor. Eh, that should probably be enough. So just jump on over, grab the one up, and then you can take the lower path as well, which is probably the easier one. There's some gaps down here that you have to deal with, but you don't have to worry about jumping into those spikes. So, you know, six of one half dozen of another. 
and we'll go through the door. Now, if you're here in the lower path, the only way to get out of here is you're going to have to wait for the acid to break you out. So we'll wait for that, but we do have Grant on our team right now, so once enough of the blocks have been broken, we can switch over to Grant and he'll get us out of here a little bit faster. So we won't have to wait quite forever for all of the blocks to be eaten away. So we'll wait here for an opening, and there it is, and then we'll switch over to our good friend Grant. And we'll just go right through that opening, and then you can take the upper or lower path again here. We'll take the upper path this time. If you don't have Grant by the time you get out of there, the upper path may not be available to you. Just keep working your way to the right. There's some moving platforms that we need to navigate here, but they're pretty easy ones that are just bobbing up and down. I think we can handle it. Try to take out these enemies if you want to jump down here to the bottom tier to grab those candles as well. And then head on back to the right. Watch out for that fuzz. And after you get that candle, you could theoretically go back up to the top. I mean, it is possible to collect all of the candles in this area if you're really into it. So grab all of those, and you cannot jump whenever there's blocks directly above your head. So keep that in mind, that certainly comes up a lot in this game. Head over here to the right, there's some more of those spike traps that we've seen before. They deal a lot of damage, so wait until they drop down to jump over. Wait for this one, and if you want to head back to the left to get those candles, it's pretty dangerous, but it is possible to do. You don't want to get hit by the spike traps when you're down here at the bottom. They could knock you into the water. So you don't want to get hit in the head by them. It's probably not worth it to come down here and grab this stuff. But if you really want another small heart, well, I guess that's where you can get one. Back up the stairs, we see the good old crushers that you know you can jump on top of. Just drop off the one on the right and then head up the stairs. Grab whatever candles you want, and then there's another one of those fuzz monsters. Jump over it, and then make your way down below, up the stairs, and head to the right. There's a big heart and a hidden wall meat that you can grab before you get out of this hallway, so don't miss that opportunity to refill your health, because it's almost time for the boss. The axe is another weapon that you'll probably want to pick up, but the whip will be sufficient against the next boss. Make your way over to the right, watching out for the acid that that eyeball drops. You certainly don't want to fall into a pit at this point. And it looks like we made it to Dracula, but no, this is Alucard. If you hang out on this platform and crouch down, that's a good place where you can whip Alucard several times in the face. Then he turns into a cloud of bats. You want to lure the cloud of bats to a spot where you'll be able to easily get up on this platform and whip him in the face again. And whenever he's in bat form, he won't be able to hurt you. So this guy's actually pretty easy. Just keep chipping away at him, and it won't be long before he goes down. And once you grab the orb here, we'll be able to recruit Alucard onto our team. And that's going to mean we'll have to say goodbye to Grant. Now there's probably a few places on this route where Grant would actually be good to have. I can think of one particular shortcut. But for the most part, Alucard is going to be a great ally. If you haven't figured it out yet, Alucard is just Dracula spelled backwards. And it's a little known fact that if you can trick him into saying Dracula, he'll have to return to his home in the fifth dimension. Should we be trusting a vampire? I know the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but is this guy actually the enemy of his father? Or is this just a ruse to trick us? Well, I guess we'll find out, because Alucard is now on our team. They take us back to the map here, but this next area is just like the final part of the previous stage. 
So there's a few of those bouncing cabbage monsters. And down here we can get a holy water for Trevor. But then let's switch over to Alucard and give him a try. As soon as you get him, he only has this single shot but he powers up a lot like Trevor. He'll find the same whip power up, and it works the same way. Whenever you have eight or more hearts, you'll be able to find the second one, and then he'll be fully powered, and he'll be able to do this spread attack. But that's not the only cool thing that we can do with Alucard. We're gonna come over here and collect this big heart and then try to attack our way out from behind these mummies. But the real reason to use this guy is he has the ability to transform into a bat, and the bat can fly. So in this room in particular, it can be very useful. If you want to collect the candles up on the top, we'll do that first, but there's a simple shortcut you can do in here. So we'll come up here, we'll grab these candles. But if you're not worried about collecting those money bags, you can press down and jump and you'll turn into a bat and you can just fly over here. Now, for every second or so while you're in bat form, your hearts will deplete and eventually you'll run out of fuel for the bats. So you'll need to collect a lot of hearts if you wanna use it. We have a decision to make here and this is the final branching path in the game. I recommend taking the upper path here if you go on this upper path, you'll have to play through more levels, but they're shorter than the ones on the lower path. And because whenever you run out of lives and die, you go back to the beginning of the current block, I think that playing shorter levels is probably better than longer ones. You'll notice how short this one is. Where there's falling blocks, you can transform into a bat and fly over. Try to avoid the enemies. If you do get hit while you're in bat form, you will be transformed back into Alucard, although you can quickly switch back into a bat. Over here, I switched to Trevor to show you that there's a dagger you can pick up, but if you have the holy water, you should stay with the holy water. We got it at the end of the previous stage for a reason, and shockingly, that reason is because it's good against the boss that's coming up. So head on up these stairs and you'll be able to find a double shot, which is going to make this boss even easier. So just spawn the boss, stand on this ledge, start lobbing holy waters and whip in between holy water throws. This guy will go down so fast. Yeah, that was easy. And we'll grab the orb, but if you don't have the holy water for this boss, it's not that big of a deal. Defeating him using the whip is pretty easy. So just wake him up, head over here, and you want to crouch down right before this pillar and just start whipping. The whip will take out the bones that he starts spinning at you, and he won't be able to get close enough to hit you with that sword. So if you whip fast enough, you'll easily be able to defeat the Skull Knight King. So either way that you fight him, we'll be on to the next stage. That brings us to a new map. This is the castle basement, so we're sort of in the castle right now, but we're still working our way up to the main castle map. Down here, we'll switch over to Alucard. That's gonna make this area a lot easier. Collect that big heart that's hidden inside the block. And down here, well, we can transform into a bat, and then we won't have to deal with these platforms. Just don't get hit by a fish man or a bat that comes flying at you. We also picked up the stopwatch, which is the only sub-weapon that Alucard can use. So if you ever get the opportunity to grab a stopwatch for him, you might as well take it. And up here, we can just keep jumping and hitting that skeleton knight before we ascend the stairs. And we'll head to the left. Now in this next area, there's going to be some lightning bolts that summon a constant stream of mummies and those mummies take several hits to kill, so here's the best way to deal with these guys. Turn into bat form and just fly over the top. Wait for them to stop shooting for a moment, then just drop down and head through the door. It's really that simple. It's like we have access to bat form, we should take advantage of bat form. Try to get over that red skeleton and head to the left. 
Over here, you should be able to jump and kill that bone tossing skeleton before you head up to the top and then make your way up the stairs. Up here, there's a bit more platforming to do. This bit is very easy and will give you the opportunity to get some big hearts. And those big hearts are gonna help fuel our bat form. So you'll wanna take the opportunity to grab those. Now there's a low ceiling here, so here's a great place for us to use bat form. We'll just fly under the spikes and then transform back by pressing down in the jump button again. Take out this enemy and make our way up into another narrow hallway. Standing right in front of this axe throwing guy is a great way to take him out. He'll take all three spread shots and that'll finish him off pretty fast. Grab another big heart to replenish some of the ones that we lost and there's actually a hidden wall meat in the ceiling here which is pretty easy to miss. Head over here, make your way to the left and take out this bone pillar before you go over to the right side. You can easily hit it from a safe spot down here. No matter how high you jump, the bone pillar's fire won't hit you, but you'll be able to hit it from this position. This is a little bit tedious, but we're almost to the boss, so ideally would like to have maximum health or as much health as we possibly could when we get there. The boss is Frankenstein's monster again, and this time it's a little bit harder to get here with a holy water, so we're gonna switch to Trevor, Hopefully you have some kind of ranged weapon, like a dagger would be good. Then you can just hang out over here on the far right side. Whenever Frankenstein stomps his foot and makes that earthquake attack, the ledge above you will protect you from the rocks that come down from the ceiling, and then you just have to avoid the rocks that he throws when he throws a single rock. The easiest way to do that is if you're hanging out on the far right. Once he throws the rock, you just need to take a few steps to the left, and the rock will sail harmlessly over your head. Then you can go back to the right side and wait for him to throw another rock. Looks like we gained an extra life, so that's good. And now we can make our way to the castle dungeon. But before we actually go to the castle dungeon, this is where the other path meets up. So let's see what happens if we took the lower path before when I recommended that we take the upper one. Once you see this stage, you're going to understand why I recommended that we take the upper path. This level is long. There's a big heart at the beginning for you to collect hidden inside of a block. And we're just going to make our way to the left. Jump up here, being careful not to fall into the water. That of course is instant death. And just keep working across. Over here, there's a few stairs to navigate. Alucard spread shot is great for taking out these skeletons before you have to go into an area where they can actually damage you. And if you have Grant, you can actually climb over the wall there for a shortcut. Now we don't have Grant, so we're going to use Alucard and go the longer way. But if you do happen to have Grant for some reason on this stage, well that is a much faster way to get through. And you'll see where the shortcut comes out at when we go up this stairway so you'd be able to skip over all of this. Now's a good time to switch over to Trevor because there's an opportunity to grab a holy water, and we all know about holy water by now. So we're always on the lookout for a place where Trevor can grab one of those, and that is the spot here in the Sunken Temple. Trevor's also very good against this bone dragon because he can attack when he's on the stairs, and Alucard cannot attack when he's on stairs. So he's like defenseless when he's on steps. And that's kind of awkward in certain parts of this game. We have the holy water right now, which is pretty good. But for this short section, having the cross boomerang is probably better. You can throw it out in front of you and then the fishman enemies that are constantly spawning will be swallowed up by it as you move to the left. So just keep those boomerangs going. Don't forget to grab that big heart on the bottom. And when we get over here, there's going to be another bone dragon for us to fight. So we'll want to stay on this upper platform and just crouch down at the end and keep whipping. This strategy usually works pretty well. So just keep whipping and eventually this bone dragon will turn into a bunch of hearts or maybe a bunch of money bags and we'll be able to pass through the door. 
Now don't feel bad that we abandoned the holy water because we're going to be able to get it again later on in the stage, so you won't have to feel bad about picking up the axe here either. And the axe is very good against this bone dragon which you can summon by moving all the way to the edge of this platform on the left side. And then if you move back here to the right, you can hit it with the axe and it won't be able to hit you. Now if you get impatient with that, you can drop down here and just crouch and try to finish it off. And this time it dropped a bunch of money bags, so that's kind of cool. And if you go right to this position, you should be able to get this wall meat before it drops into the water. Now we'll make our way across. You'll certainly want your health for the boss, which is coming up. And down here, if we get in this position, we can take out another bone dragon with axes from a spot where it can't hit us with its fireballs. We'll jump up here and finish off this guy with the whip. And one nice thing about these bone dragons is that because they die in a cloud of hearts, if you use a bunch of sub weapons to take them out, well you'll get that ammo right back. We'll transform into Alucard here, and that's because there's a stopwatch item, so if you don't have a stopwatch for Alucard yet, now's a good place to pick one up. Remember, that's the only sub weapon that he can use. Now whenever you're playing as Alucard, you'll probably be spending most of your hearts on turning into bat form and not on stopwatches, but hey, it's nice to have options. We're getting close to the first phase of the boss, but we have to take out another bone dragon. Here's another safe spot that you can use to fight it. You need to walk far enough right to make the bone dragon spawn, but then you can step back here and jump up onto this ledge, where you'll be able to kill it with your axes. We do want to conserve our health, and we got the money bags, and some of them didn't spawn because part of the dragon was off screen when it died. And so here's that boss. Now the worst thing that can happen to you when you're fighting the Bone Dragon King is that you get knocked into a pit. So if you stay on the right side of this platform, that's probably the safest spot where you can be to avoid getting knocked back into a hole. It's not like it's impossible and you may need to move around here and there, but one nice thing about this boss is you don't have to fully kill it at this point. You just need to get rid of two thirds of its health and then it'll run away and the water will start filling up in the sunken temple. When we get into the next area, the water is going to be constantly rising, so we're going to need to get out of here fast, or eventually it'll get high enough to kill us. There's a dagger we can grab at the beginning, but the item we're actually looking for is the holy water, which you'll find up here. Be careful of the blocks that are breaking out from below your feet, you don't want to fall into the water and die, but whenever you're standing on a legitimate block like these next ones that you'll be able to jump down to here, you don't have to be too worried about the water. If it just touches your feet, that's not going to kill you. It's not until it gets up over where those bubbles are on the top layer that it actually becomes dangerous. If you have time, you can grab a 1-up over there in the wall on the right, and you probably will have enough time to do it. Transform into bat form and fly out of here if you have to, but you can see you can touch the water, just don't hang out in there for too long. As we get to the top of the stairs, we can switch over to Alucard. There's not a lot of great items over on the right side, so now's a great time to turn into a bat and just fly up here, skipping all those shenanigans over on the right. That'll save us some time so we won't have to really worry so much about the rising water. And we can just head over to the left where we'll be able to finish off the Bone Dragon King. So be careful and switch back to Trevor. There's some blocks here that'll break out from under your feet, but once you get this far you should be fine. Head all the way to the left and I just like to start whipping. That guy will go right through you without dealing damage. And then I'm just waiting for him to come up near the platform so that we can throw a holy water on him, which will finish him off very quickly. If you don't have holy water, you'll have to do it with the whip, but this guy doesn't have a lot of health left, so just keep whipping him and he'll go down pretty fast. When we go back to the map, we'll be able to see the sunken ruins actually sink and disappear. And now we'll be on that lower castle map, but we'll skip over the castle basement and we'll be at where the other path was in the castle dungeon. The castle dungeon is pretty brutal. 
We are going to be happy that we have Alucard here. And if you came here with Grant or as Trevor by himself, well, good luck with this one. You're going to have to do a lot of waiting around. And we'll have to do a little bit of waiting around in here. We need to let the acid eat through these blocks before we can make our way to the door. We can spend our time trying to grab a big heart in the lower left while we're waiting for the acid to eat through. But eventually, it will dissolve enough blocks that we can fly up and then head over to the left. The next little segment is a short one, so we'll just head through the door and we're going to jump across these blocks. You can see that they're suspended by rope and that should just tip you off that they're probably the kind of blocks that will break out from under you. So quickly head across. If it looks like you're going to fall, turn into a bat, but try to save your hearts. We're going to want to use them later. Here's a good time where we can use our bat form. That'll get us through here very quickly. So wait until the acid has dripped in such a way that it's not going to hit you and you can fly right up and over to the door. That only took three hearts to do, so although it just was a time saver, it was probably worth it. Over here, we're going to find some blocks that are falling from the sky, and the game kind of wants you to wait for them to fill up the screen enough so that you can jump up to the stairs, but we can do better than that. By transforming into a bat, we can just fly up there and we won't have to deal with that at all. Up here we can head over to the left and get some wall meat. I'm kind of surprised that vampires like Alucard would even want to eat the wall meat. Maybe it's human? Ugh. Well, in any case, we can use our axe sub weapon to hit that skeleton before we head up the stairs. Although we do need to concern ourselves with the bouncing green blobs. So look out for those cabbage monsters. Hit the candles, and make your way down the stairs whenever the opportunity presents itself. You kind of want that skeleton knight to back himself up a bit. Over here, we're going to reach a mid-boss, and you've seen this guy before, so you know what to do about the giant bat. You just want to attack him right where he starts. He may split up a bit, but you can usually get a lot of the bats at the same time. And even without the boomerang that we had the last time we fought that guy, he's still not that difficult. Now in this part, it feels like we're in the bad part of a Tetris game, and we're just kind of waiting for this screen to fill up with blocks, which, if they fall on you, they can deal damage. Now it's actually going to take a long time for that to fill up, so the better thing to do is to just turn into Alucard, and float up here as a bat whenever you see that the coast is clear. You don't want to get hit by one of the falling blocks, although you'll notice that it only deals two damage. This room is full of everyone's favorite, the spiders that drop down and shoot smaller spiders. So make your way across, turn into a bat if you need to fly over some enemies, and then head on up the stairs. The spiders aren't going to stop though. You may want to use your stopwatch there if you have it. Up here you'll want to take out these birds before you try to go up to the top. It's not that difficult to ride the platforms here, but let's just cut to the chase and fly over as a bat. If we can land on this platform, we can go down to the bottom here, where we'll be able to get a 1-up. Nice, that's an easy one. And then we can head through the door. In this next room, there's some moving platforms that we need to navigate while avoiding bats that are flying around in here. Or we can just do this, turn into a bat, fly right up here and go up the stairs and move on with our lives. In here, you can see that there's some of those platforms that if you jump and land on them, they'll flip over. So you want to avoid jumping if at all possible. Step backwards and move around to avoid the Medusa heads. If you do get hit by a Medusa head and you go flying and you start falling off the screen, if you quickly press down and jump, you may be able to save yourself by turning into a bat. So keep that in mind as you cross here. Head on through the door, watching out for any Medusa heads, and that's going to take us to an auto-scrolling area. I know everybody likes auto-scrollers. 
first we just have to go up these stairs. There's no auto-scrolling happening just yet. But watch out for the spiders, they are not going to stop spawning. Once you make it to that platform on the far left side, that's when the auto-scroll is going to start. So you want to take out that enemy before you jump up here, considering that those blocks will break out from under you. And here it is. It started a scrolling. Up here, we'll switch over to Trevor and make our way up to the top of the stairs. There's going to be some stairs in this area, so Trevor is probably your best bet. Make your way over through this part. I like to take this stairway on the left side. I think that's a little bit easier. And then take this stairway. The big advantage to taking the stairs instead of jumping up the platforms is that while the platforms are probably faster, if you get hit by an enemy, you're going to experience some knockback, while if you get hit by an enemy when you're on the stairs, it's like you're glued to the stairs and you'll be fine. Over here, there's no stair option, but you do want to take the left set of stairs when you get to the top, and you'll see why when we get up here. There's going to be a hidden wall meet, and you won't be able to access it from the other side. We're going to head up here across the top, and that's going to take us to the boss. It's going to be the triple threat again, but it's a little bit different this time. We don't have Saifa's magic, and it is possible to use Alucard to fly to that upper platform where you can try to hit these enemies with your axe, or if you had a holy water or something, you may be able to use that. But I think it's better to just get down here and start whipping them as soon as they come out of the coffin. Get behind this one, start whipping him. Sometimes I get hit by that guy, but it's not that big of a deal because we'll be able to make up for it on the other two bosses. We certainly know how to deal with the Cyclops by now. Whenever he throws the hammer like that, you can jump and hit him in the face. And when he's walking at normal speed, you'll have some opportunities to jump and hit him. Whenever he's charging though, you want to quickly make your way to the other side of the screen so that you'll have a chance to jump over him. So just keep chipping away at the Cyclops, and then we'll have the Leviathan. And the Leviathan, as usual, is pretty slow. We're going to take him over on the left side here. What we want to do is have his third jump put him up on one of those platforms. So we'll lure him this way. And then if he's up on the platform whenever he shoots the fireballs, which he does every third jump, we'll be able to let them harmlessly pass over our head. Now, if he's on the ground, you want to get pretty far away from the Leviathan when he's about to spit the fireballs, because that'll give you the best chance to avoid them. It shouldn't be too hard to defeat the triple threat and collect the red orb, which will bring us to the final map. This path is going to take us directly to the castle entrance, so we won't have to go through the castle bridge this time. You may remember the castle entrance from before, but there are some different strategies we can use with Alucard on our team, and some of them are pretty interesting. So we can grab this rosary, which you would almost think would kill Alucard as well as the enemies, but it doesn't. So we'll just keep making our way to the right. If you don't have Alucard fully powered up, make sure that you get Hull a Candle so that you get him to the three shot spread. And when you get over here, you could just use Bat Form to fly up and that will allow you to avoid the stairs. Remember, Alucard isn't that good on stairs. So we're just going to hurry through this stage. We've been here before and we're going to take advantage of some of the things we can do with bat form. So up here we can just fly over these enemies. It's pretty easy to get past the spiders. You can fly right through their thread and that will bring us to this door. In this room there's a small one space gap that we can fly through in bat form that will allow us to go right up to the upper tier and put us right next to the stairway that will take us to the next segment. So we'll grab a few more hearts and head on up. This is a cool room. If you jump up and get hit by that axe, 
and right when you take damage transform into a bat, you can actually damage boost through the ground, which is a pretty awesome shortcut to get you up to that stairway. We're gonna hit these candles to the left to get a few more hearts so that we can fuel our bat form. This is where that collapsing bridge is, and if we turn into a bat, we'll be totally safe as we fly across to the right, so that's what we're going to do. After this part, we're going to face the Grim Reaper, and Alucard is actually pretty good against the Reaper, so let's check out that strategy. As Alucard, I like to start on the upper right platform, so start up there, start shooting the Grim Reaper, and then you're gonna drop down to the right, go back up into the middle and keep hitting him, then drop down here, move over to the left, because he always does this sway from the middle to the right side thing, and you can certainly exploit that. Now, once he turns into the head, get back up here, crouch down, and just start mashing the attack button. He'll get close to you, but you should be able to get him pretty low on health, and then you can just drop down here and finish him off. The Grim Reaper is pretty easy as Alucard. That's going to bring us once again to the Castle Gardens, which we know is the next to last stage in the game, and also one of the hardest. But with Alucard on our side, it's going to make it a little bit easier. In the very first room, there's no enemies, so take your time, grab candles if you need to power up, and then make your way up the stairs. Up here, you may remember there was a ledge on the left side that we couldn't reach before when we came through here as Sypha, but we can as Alucard. It would be an axe if Trevor didn't already have an axe, and you would have to switch to Trevor to get it, so if you need an axe for Trevor, you can pick one up there, but it's not actually that exciting. Wait until these flea men drop down and hit them with your full-powered spread attack, and if you see any drop behind you, turn around and get them too. At this point, we're almost to the end. We can turn into a bat and fly up to the stairs. That'll make it a little bit easier to get through there. Up here, although we have a spread attack, we can't use it to reach those candles. We would need like the axe with Trevor or Sypha's lightning to reach those. In here, we're in another room with the crushers. Of course, you could stand on top of them, we know that already. You don't probably need to use bat form to get through here. This room is already pretty easy. So we'll just take it through the normal way, and we'll save our hearts for some of the later rooms. When we head up the stairs, it's going to take us to the room with all of the bone pillars, and this is one of the tougher rooms in the game. Get up here and then jump into the air and transform into a bat. Now wait for that first bone pillar to fire and then you can just keep hitting the jump button to go right up through the middle there. Turn back into Alucard to take out this last bone pillar. And once he's been cleared, you may have to turn to the left a few times to take out a gargoyle. Don't forget to do that. But once you finally get rid of this bone pillar, you can go up the stairs and just watch out for the one on the left side. You don't want to get hit by him, but you'll at least be on the stairs so you won't get knocked back. Being able to fly certainly makes that room easier. When you get up here, you want to get onto the stairs, wait until the axe is boomeranging back to the axe knight, and then climb to the top where you'll be able to hit him with a full blast of three spread shots. A few of those will take him out pretty fast. In this next room, you can kill the enemies and go up the steps, or you can just turn into a bat and fly up to the next ledge. Either way, you should be able to quickly get through this one. We'll head up to the next room, which is the good old auto-scroller. This time, I like to get ahead of it a little bit by transforming into a bat, and if there's any jumps that are going to be difficult for you to make, you should just turn into a bat instead. Like, it would be hard to make a jump to get up to the ledge on the right, so we'll just turn into a bat, switch back to Trevor so that we can get the holy water. Now, the boss of this stage? Alucard is not very good against this boss. So you want to make sure that you get that holy water for Trevor when you have the opportunity, and then switch back to Alucard because he's way better for this auto-scrolling section. You can fly right over here where the 1-up is and easily collect that, and then you can just fly out of there too. So yeah, this part's going to be way easier than it was before. 
We'll just wait here for that skeleton to appear, take him out, and if you ever get behind, just fly. It's really that simple. We are getting a little bit low on hearts, but there's no need to panic. There's five hearts right over here that we can pick up, and we're almost to the top at this point. So once we get up here, we're safe. So we'll just wait for the screen to catch up, and we can actually get this candle over here, which we know is just a heart. I don't know why it's in such a hard to get location. And then we'll make our way over to the right and head on up to the top. We know that there's a wall meat hidden in this room, but we have full health right now, so we'll go up to the top and deal with this Axe Knight guy first, and well, I guess we need the wall meat now. We did get the big heart, so that will be helpful. We're going to use our flight ability again in the next room, but we'll head over here and recharge our health really quick before we go in there. Now the next room is that water filled one, and you may remember there was a shortcut we could do with Sypha where you would freeze a bird. Well instead here you just want to deal with the bird, so try to get him out of the way. We'll worry about this fish man too, but get the bird down on your level, take care of him, and then transform into a bat and you can just sneak right up here. And that'll get us to the next part. Up here we just have to get through this room and we'll be at the boss. You could try turning into a bat and flying across this, but you do want to save some of your hearts for the boss. The easiest way to beat the doppelganger is going to be to switch over to Trevor and use that holy water that we picked up in the auto-scrolling section. So here's what we're going to do, we're going to throw a holy water on that corner so as soon as the doppelganger spawns he'll get hit. Hit him again in the middle with the holy water, and then whenever he's up on this platform, we can try to finish him off. If he comes down to the bottom, hit him with holy water again. You shouldn't have too much trouble beating this guy if you have the holy water. And with that, once again, we're on to Dracula's Lair. This will be our last time through Dracula's Lair. We have Alucard with us this time, and he's pretty good against these birds that attack us at the beginning, especially if you already have his full spread shot. Otherwise, you'll want to take out the candles in this area so that you can fully power him up. And if you want to jump across here, make sure to take out the skeleton first. So kill that guy, then jump across. And this is a spot where you could get an axe for Trevor if you need a sub-weapon for him. So grab a sub weapon for Trevor if you need it, and the next room is going to be that auto scrolling one, so it's probably good to switch back to Alucard for that. Being able to fly could bail you out if you mess up down here. So we're going to make our way down the stairs. Remember you can fall off the bottom of the screen, but you can also be killed by waiting too long at the top. And as you go between the gap here, there's a spot where you can't jump, so make sure that you wait for a platform to spawn below before you drop off there. We can switch to Trevor here if you want to get a stopwatch. I also wanted to illustrate that that's a place where you can pick up a stopwatch for Alucard if you don't already have one, but we did already have one so it would not have spawned if we were using him. The stopwatch is pretty good against the medusas in this area. It's nice to be able to freeze them, but it does use up a lot of hearts. We can turn into a bat and just fly over here to the stairs on the left, and that'll take us down to this room where we can turn into a bat right on the stairway and just fly over. It's probably fine to just hit that bone pillar and go right into the door as long as it's not going to kill you because there's going to be some wall meat that we can find right here. The wall meat is definitely not the most important thing in this room, although I mean it's something good, but the most important thing in this room is this is where you will find the last axe before Dracula, and Alucard is not very good against Dracula, so you want to make sure that you outfit Trevor with an axe. So we're going to switch to him now. It's that candle over on the right, right near the stairs. So head over here, hit that, and make sure to get that axe. You can switch back to Alucard after you have it. We may want to use his bat ability to just fly over to the left, and we can just avoid these silly pendulums. 
so we'll just fly over here and just go right through the door. It doesn't matter if we use up most of our hearts, because we can just take a moment and build up some right at the beginning here. When we're using Trevor against Dracula, we'll be able to get a number of hits in with the whip, so we won't need quite as many hearts as we needed whenever we fought him as Grant, but you still want a bunch of hearts just in case things go awry. You also need to make sure that Trevor has the level 3 whip, because having that extended range will be very useful against the Count. So we'll just take our time, get a bunch of hearts, try to build up to you know, somewhere near 50. There's going to be a few more as we head over towards Dracula, so let's switch over to Trevor. You do not want to get the dagger though, don't forget about that. So make sure that you skip that particular candle. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. You want to get just far enough away from Dracula that you can hit him with the end of your whip range. That'll make sure that the fires aren't too close together so that you can dodge the middle one. And you want to get ready to dodge that middle fire whenever you see him raise his arm. If he's a little bit too far away, hit him with the axes, and once he's low on health, just get close and finish him off. When he transforms into the Dracula heads, you know that they always drift to the right corner first, so get to the left of the boss and start whipping it as you walk with it to the right. Then you'll want to hit it with the axes when it's high up in the air, but remember it's going to want to drift back down to the right corner, so make sure that you're on the left side of it before it goes over there or you'll take a bunch of damage when it bumps into you. Try to finish this guy off as quickly as you can, and then if you want to ride the platform in the middle and get a few free hits on Dracula, you can, but just like with Grant, you want to mostly avoid those platforms and stay over here by the throne where you can jump and hit him with the axes. If you see him shooting a laser at you, you can just take a step to the left to get out of the way, and you can jump over some of the shorter lasers. Now right at this part of the fight, the block in front of the throne is going to come out of the ground, so you want to be ready for that. Do not be standing on that platform when it comes out of the ground, because you may accidentally step off of it into a hole and die. As long as you avoid the platform right there, you'll probably be safe for the rest of the fight. So just keep yourself grounded, jump and throw the axes at Dracula's face, and once his life bar is depleted, wait for the platforms to go back into the ground and grab the final red ball. Alright, let's check out the Alucard ending. Well I guess we were right to team up with Alucard. He didn't end up stabbing us in the back and he actually went through on the whole killing Dracula thing. As we watch the castle collapse, you can see just how tall Alucard is. This guy looks like he could play for the NBA. Just like in all the endings, it says about how Trevor made many sacrifices, but the long fight is over. Dracula is dead, and all other spirits are asleep. Although we know that's not true. Dracula will totally be back. After that, we find out that Alucard feels guilty because he killed his real father. Yeah, that guy is going to need a lot of therapy to be able to unpack that one. It says that Trevor somehow realizes this, and he stands there thinking about Alucard. So is he thinking about killing Alucard? Or is he thinking like, ah, I wonder if he noticed my hair? It's kind of hard to say from this. Now there is one more ending, the ending that you get whenever you complete the game solo with Trevor. So as this one wraps up, let's take a look at that one last ending. We'll go back to the fight with Dracula, already in progress. If you only have Trevor on your team, you don't have any other options for who you're going to use against Dracula, and I certainly recommend using the same strategy. Just stay by the throne and you won't have to worry about falling into the holes. Make sure you have enough hearts to finish this guy off, and it really doesn't take too much to beat Dracula if you know what you're doing. 
if you're messing around with those platforms, I can't tell you how many times I was riding on a platform, I got hit by something, or I just stepped off by accident and landed in an instant death pit. But over here, it's very easy to judge the range, and it's very easy to get the hits that you need to finish off Drek. And here it is, the fourth and final ending of Castlevania 3. Whenever you beat the game with Trevor by himself, in the final cutscene you'll see that he's wearing this cape, and he hasn't been wearing that cape since the opening cutscene of the game, so I'm not sure where the cape went this whole time, but we get to see it flap in the breeze a little bit before we see the final bit of text. Did you know that Trevor made many sacrifices, and the long fight is over? Dracula is dead and all other spirits are asleep? Yeah, I think we may have seen that before. This next little bit is weird though. In the shadows, a person watches the castle fall. Now I assume that they're talking about Trevor there, but it sure sounds like they could mean that somebody else was also watching the castle fall, and that we're not able to see who that person is because they're in the shadows. So I'm not exactly sure what this ending means, but in any case, after this fight the Belmont name will be honored by all people. And as the text scrolls away and it fades to black, it's time to finally roll the credits. I guess it's not exactly the credits though, they're not going to show you who actually made the game. It's more like a roll call of the different characters. So it starts out with Sypha, who they label a vampire hunter, and I would probably put her as more like some kind of magician or sorcerer or wizard. Now Grant, Grant is labeled as an acrobat, so that seems a little bit more fitting. I mean, they're all vampire hunters. This game came out back in 1991, but even so many years later, it is still a blast to play. This game is really big. It's kind of hard to believe that it all fit on a small Nintendo cartridge. I like the branching paths, although after playing the game several times, I think it may have been better that instead of going to the map screen to make the decision, what if some of the levels just had two different exits, and depending on which way you went, that would determine which level you played next. That would have integrated a little bit of the exploration from Castlevania 2, which would have been cool. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Castlevania 3 and bring the Belmont name the respect that it truly deserves. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos, because we all know that Dracula is never really dead. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.